It's the end of 2021 and car values are through the roof. And we're all kicking ourselves for not buying some of these cars that used to be so affordable. For $20,000, you could buy an NSX or a Supra. And now these cars are close to $100,000, over $100,000. It's insane. But if you're like me and you're feeling a little discouraged about some cars that you've missed the boat on, I have compiled a list of five different cars that you can still buy, which are really fun, and they haven't quite you know, gone up and skyrocketed in value yet, although I do think they will be appreciating. So they're good buys in the long run. Welcome, as always, to another episode of Eat, Sleep, Drive. My name is Kurt. If you enjoy this kind of content, hit the like and subscribe button. I love making car buying advice videos. So let's just jump right in. I'm going to hit you with some cheaper cars first, and then we're going to go slightly more expensive. And all of these are under $30,000, so they're pretty affordable. The first car that I think is flying under the radar recently is the Acura RSX Type S. JDM cars and you know just earlier sports Japanese cars are really hot right now. There was a Civic Si that just sold for over thirty thousand dollars on Bring a Trailer. Uh, we already know that uh, Integra Type Rs are crazy money, and I think it just makes sense that the RSX will also kind of go down that path. It won't be quite as desirable, uh, but it is still a really good car and. They're pretty cheap right now. They're under 10 grand. You could get a decent one for under 10 grand easily. They have that iconic K series engine from Honda. You know, everyone is lamenting the fact that all the new Hondas, I just drove the new Civic Si, which is a great car, but it's turbocharged. And everyone's like, oh, I remember these high revving NA Honda motors. And, you know, this is a prime example of that. This car specifically is in a beautiful blue color. They're a little bit hard to find in not like ragged out fashion because they have been cheap for a long time and people have, for the most part, ruined them. But, you know, you could get a Type S. It's got a wonderful manual transmission and they're pretty good looking cars too. There's a lot of mods out there for them. Look at that. Look at this car. And this blue color is, is just absolutely beautiful. Uh, this one specifically is $9,000. Like I said, I've seen ones for you know eight 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 thousand five hundred with a little more miles on them but bone stock i would definitely try and find a car that is completely stock this one's been modified a little bit but not too bad it looks like it's got some exhaust work and intake not the end of the world but ideally you find one that's stock because it's probably um, a little less abused per, per se but 8000 rpm redline who doesn't love something that revs to over 8000 rpm great cars under 10 grand they're flying under the radar check them out let's go to another cheap car and this is one you know we, we this radwood era is really taking over cars from the 80s and 90s uh, people are all nostalgic about people my age um in their you know in their 30s that maybe have a little of disposable income now and want to buy a car that when they were a kid they really liked the, these cars are super popular right now so dsms uh dsms think evos think eclipses think talons uh eagle talons Evos have really shot up in value, and, and there will be a car similar to an Evo we'll talk about later in the video, but along the same lines, th this is the same family of car. Eagle Talons, um, Mitsubishi Eclipses, which was obviously before the uh, Lancer Evos. These cars are going to go up in value, and they're really cool and rad for the area. This is a 91 Eagle Talon. And it has the 4G63, which is, you know, the same engine family that was in the Evo. Uh, very iconic motor. And they're just really cool cars. Like, this is an awesome color. Uh, you know, you just look at the, sky, the styling and you're just like, yeah, like, late 80s, early 90s. Love the rear end of these, these cars. They're properly quick. I mean, any, any amount of mods that you want to do to these they're out there. This is a pretty clean example, honestly. Um, a 91 for 7,500 bucks. It looks like it's been, uh, the engine's been refreshed. I mean, like I said, with all these, you really want something that's a little more stock, I think. 
but this is this is just such a good car. I mean, for 7500 bucks, you could have 7500 bucks sitting in your bank account or you can drive $7,500 and you won't be able to drive the value out of this car. If you can keep it clean, keep it from rusting, it's going to hold its value and go up in value uh, for sure. And you could drive this car to Radwood and it will be uh, definitely officially rad. So let's get a little more expensive. Um, we're still well under $30,000, but if you are not into the cheap cars like this, let's move to a V8. EVs are coming whether we like it or not, and V8s are going away. So honestly, like a safe bet is a V8 in general, just because people are gonna want these things and you can't get them anymore. And while there are so many options to choose from, I wanted to pick an American car and one that like is, there. they sold so many of these, frankly. You can find Mustang GTs all over the place. But what I like about this car is that the 2012 pluses uh, in the fifth generation Mustangs, they all had the Coyote engine. And that was really a huge turning point for Ford. Before that, they had like a crummy V8 that just, it wasn't that exciting, honestly, in the Mustangs of that generation. But once they put the Coyote in, you know, 400 horsepower really woke this car up. And you can buy one of these and modify these, um, you know, just, just a little bit of suspension mods. And even though these are live axle cars, you can make them handle really well. So they're really just good value. The, the engines are durable. They are pretty fast. And like I said, value per dollar, uh, is under 20 grand, you can find one for sure. Manual transmission, rear wheel drive, V8. That That is always a recipe for winning, and it's something that you can't buy anymore. So check out um, these you know, early teens, uh, 2012, 2013, 2014 Mustang GTs. The S550s, which is the sixth generation, the later Mustangs are great, but they're really expensive right now, uh, well in the $30,000 range. Um, so I think this car is most of the way there. Uh, for significantly less money, sometimes half the money. Uh, w and when you look at it from a value proposition, I think these are great cars and will hold their value in the long run. So if you're not into the American car scene, uh, but you do want to spend into the 20s, I alluded to it earlier, the Mitsubishi Evo is already too expensive. They have gone up in value and are, are, are hard to find, uh, not rusted or anything like that. But a car that hasn't quite, you know, started to skyrocket yet are STIs, Subaru STIs. And, you know, they're really that iconic battle between the STI and the Evo has been around for a long time. And I do admit that I think Evos are objectively a better car. They're faster, they handle better. I've owned both, and, and, and I could say that that's true, but there's something about STIs that I just like more. Uh, it's just these intangible things, like the way it sounds. Um, it does. They do seem to be built a little bit better. They're screwed together a little bit better. And for whatever reason, the prices haven't skyrocketed with Evos yet, or like Evos have. And I think the main reason for that is they sold a lot more STIs than Evos. Um, so... That's probably the biggest factor. Uh, so when it comes to exclusivity, it's much more rare to see an Evo than it is an STI. That said, STIs, especially the first generation that we could get in the States, 04 to 07, are great buys. Um, they're relatively affordable right now. Starting to go up in value though, so don't miss out. This used to be a $20,000 car. Now it's a twenty four dollars to $25,000 car. And this one specifically is a really clean example. I actually messaged this guy and was interested in buying it. And he was like waffling on whether or not he's going to sell it. As with all these cars, buy one closer to stock. Um, these cars can be used and abused. But, uh, you know, plenty of aftermarket support. The EJ engines are known for not being like the most reliable. But if you keep them pretty stock, they, they can treat you relatively well. They're just, they're just really cool cars. I think that they're of an era. You know, we look at everything that's cyclical. 
uh, air cooled 911s got super popular a few years ago. Now it's radwood stuff, stuff from the 80s and 90s, and soon enough it's going to be stuff from the early 2000s. And this is a car I grew up on and I absolutely love. Used to own one and really kind of regret selling it and would like to get in one again. So check out STIs. They're only going to go up in value. People love the JDM stuff. Now, the most expensive car that we're going to feature is still under $30,000, but we're going to go German since we haven't had a German car yet. Um, we've seen the, co the cost of BMWs in general go through the roof, sp specifically BMW M3s. But how about a Mercedes C63 AMG? Once again, talking about V8s that we're no longer going to get. This was a 6.2 liter, even though his badge is a 6.3 liter. But that's besides the fact. In incredible engine like it maybe not the most reliable thing that amg has done in fact probably one of more unreliable amg engines but it is definitely one of the best amg engines ever made and you're just never going to see anything like this this is just a nuke of an engine uh and these cars are holding relatively steady they've definitely gone up in value this used to be a twenty-two thousand dollar car now it's around twenty-seven thousand dollars and i tell you what pretty soon i guarantee you within a year they're going to be over 30. Um, the fact that their rear wheel drive um, have incredible sounds from these v8s they're actually really good to drive you know a lot of the mercedes were known to being inferior driving wise compared to BMWs always of their era, but this was a lot closer. Granted, they are only automatic, but I still think long play, um, that's not going to be as big of a deal with these cars just because the engine is so good. Uh, this is a nice, pretty clean example. Uh, it's got under 100,000 miles. And what I'll say with these C63s is you definitely want a 2011 plus. The 2011 Pluses uh, had head bolt fix issues, or they fixed the head bolt issues is what I should say. The earlier cars, the 2009, 2010, it was a known issue with head bolts. It's a relatively expensive job to um, essentially replace the you know head bolts uh, on these cars. So get one that has, you'll have to do your own research. There's like, a certain VIN number that you have to buy past that. But once you do that, they're not too bad. Um, like I said, there are some things that you need to fix with these, but it's just a iconic German car at this point. And it's a muscle car, a German muscle car that there aren't too many of. You'll never see anything over six liters again in the V8 fashion. It's just, it's a bananas car and they look and sound good. Uh, this is often referred to as the wolf in sheep's clothing car uh, because it looks just kind of like a regular C-class Mercedes, but it has this bomb of an engine. So these are some examples, I think, five examples of cars that, you know, they haven't skyrocketed in value yet, still affordable. So if you're in the market, uh, and you're looking around and just like, oh my God, the cost of cars is insane. Look to some of these cars. They're going to treat you well, I think, from a value perspective. And um, they're, they're all just like really good cars to drive and own. So it's not just like, I'm not picking cars that you should just buy and just keep in your garage and never drive. Like, go drive these things. For the most part, I mean, obviously the RSX is going to be reliable. I think the Subaru... You know, some people have uh, questions on that is I think it's going to be relatively reliable. Uh, you know, the Japanese cars, stuff like that. Uh, the Mustang, pretty reliable. AMG, okay, yeah, obviously you're getting a little more expensive. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Uh, I know that there are a lot of different cars out there in this uh, category. So let me know what you think if I've missed some. And I love doing... Uh, videos like this so please leave comments hit the like button and let me know what you'd like to see next time as far as you know what kind of buyer's guy would you like would you like to see cheaper cars more expensive cars cars that are depreciating in value cars that are gaining in value let me know in the comments below eat sleep drive tv on instagram and i'll see you guys in the next one peace